Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating and interpreting the standard error of the mean using SPSS. The standard error of the mean helps us quantify the precision of the mean. So it helps us to estimate what a population mean might be when we have access to a sample mean. The standard error of the mean is a different construct than the standard deviation. The standard deviation is a measure of dispersion within a set of scores, whereas the standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the mean. And sometimes the standard error of the mean is referred to as the standard deviation of the mean. So to calculate the standard error of the mean and the to illustrate the difference between the standard error of the mean and the standard deviation. Let's take a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS. And the focus here will be this variable symptoms. And let's assume that this variable has scores that are recorded as t-scores. That's a standard score that has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. And let's also assume that the scores in this variable are normally distributed. I'm going to demonstrate two different ways to calculate the standard error of the mean. One lists the standard error of the mean along with other statistics in a column and the other in a row. So first I'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics and Frequencies. I'm going to take the variable symptoms and move that over to the variable list box. Under statistics, you can see that under central tendency, we have the options mean, median, mode, and sum. I'm going to check off mean. And then under dispersion, I'm going to check off standard deviation, variance, range, minimum, maximum, and the standard error of the mean. Click continue. And I'm going to uncheck the display frequency tables option and click OK. And you can see this displays the statistics that we requested in a column. So we have 48 valid cases, none are missing. The mean of this variable is 50.44, the standard error of the mean 1.328, and the standard deviation 9.202. So because this was a t-score, we're not surprised that the mean is going to be close to 50 and the standard deviation is going to be close to 10. Because again, a t-score is a standard score with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. A second way to calculate the standard error of the mean, go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Descriptives move symptoms over to the variable list box and under options you can see that mean, standard deviation, minimum, and maximum are checked off by default. I'm going to add variance, range, and standard error of the mean. Click continue and then click OK. So you can see we have the variable symptoms and the statistics are displayed in a row. So we have the count here, 48, the range, the minimum, the maximum. Under the heading mean, we have the statistic itself, 50.44, and the standard error, 1.328. And then we have the standard deviation and the variance. So to illustrate the difference between the standard error of the mean and the standard deviation, let's first consider the standard deviation. Again, it's a measure of dispersion, and it tells us the average distance that we would expect a score to be from the mean. And because we're going to assume that these data, the scores in the symptoms variable, are normally distributed, we know that we can expect 68% of the scores to be between the mean minus the standard deviation and the mean plus the standard deviation. So now let's consider the standard error of the mean. 
So we can see we have a standard error of the mean of 1.328 and the mean of 50.44. And the standard error of the mean, just like the standard deviation, is expressed in the units of the variable. So if we subtract 1.328 from 50.44, we get 49.112. And if we add the standard error to the mean, we get 51.768. So knowing that this variable symptoms is normally distributed, we would assume that the true population mean has a 68% chance of falling between 49.112 and 51.768. If we wanted to know the range associated with the 95% probability of containing the population mean, we would take the standard error and multiply it by 1.96 and take that value and subtract it from the mean to create a lower bound and add it to the mean to create an upper bound. The standard error of the mean is calculated by taking the standard deviation and dividing it by the square root of the sample size. So again we can see here the standard deviation is 9.202, the sample size or n is 48. So if I move over to Excel, you can see I have the standard deviation here and the sample size here. So I'll build the function to calculate the standard error of the mean. I'll start with equal sign, and then the standard deviation, then divided by square root, which is SQRT in Excel, and then N, sample size. And we can see that it's 1.328, the same value that we found with SPSS. I hope you found this video on calculating and interpreting the standard error of the mean using SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.